Baron. <laughs> Baron. Hello. How are you? I just got a phone call saying you never showed up to the bake sale with the peach cobblers. It's preposterous. Who would create such a vicious lie? <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> Baron, don't tell me you ate all 17 of them. Those peach cobblers were for charity. This is as much your fault as it is mine. What? You make that peach cobbler too damn good. <laughs> I mean, putting 17 hot steaming cobblers in a car with the Baron, well, it's kind of like putting a baby gazelle in a cage with a tiger. I was up all night making those. You really don't think of anyone but yourself, do you? <sighs> Look, why don't we go back to my place? Put on the DeBarge acoustic album, and I'll help you remake the cobblers. No, you're not hearing me. The bake sale ended two hours ago, and so did we. Have you lost your mind? No, but somewhere along the way, you lost your soul. Come back to me when you find it. Chantel was a great woman, and an even better baker. If I was to get her back in my life, I'd have to change my evil ways. But how? Her words kept ringing in my head. Somewhere along the way, you lost your soul. I was used to feeding my stomach, but how could a man feed his soul? Then it all came together. Soul food. Soul food is a magical cuisine deeply rooted in the African-American culture and consciousness. Much like one of the Baron's other favorite foods, Gucci Fritos, the creation of soul food came mainly from necessity. When first arriving in the U.S., Africans were faced with unimaginable adversity, and to survive, had to use vegetables and parts of the animal that were oftentimes overlooked. Elements such as pig's feet, chicken gizzards, cow tongue, stomach, jowls, and small intestines were transformed from undesirable to delicious with clever cooking techniques and powerful seasonings. Over the years, Native American dishes such as cornbread and hominy grits also became soul food staples. In the late 1800s, these classic recipes intermingled with those of Irish and German immigrants to make the larger category of Southern cuisine. Utilization is one of the defining characteristics of soul food. Nothing goes to waste. Even the water that is used to cook collard greens goes on to become a liquid known as pot liquor, a vitamin-rich broth that is often served hot with cornbread. But if you live life like the Baron, a pilot martini works just as well. When walking into Brzezette's Soul Food at 1145 Bronx River Avenue, owner and head chef Rose could tell I was a man at odds with the world. You look like you need some soul food. Like an ambrosial angel of mercy, she quickly bestowed upon me her toothsome totems with a gentle, saintly hand. Hey, you got some chitlins, collard greens, macaroni and cheese, big fish. Cornbread, oh, homemade lemonade. With each passing bite, I felt a deeper sense of joy and empathy. For the first time in my life, my cold heart became warm with love and understanding. If I'd been watching Titanic, I probably would have wept like a child. However, the true revelation revealed itself as I bit into the boldly flavored chitlins. It all became clear. I realized I'd lived my life as a selfish slob, only seeking out my own banal satisfaction. I wanted to change. I wanted to change the world, but how? I would spread the word of the Chitlin Rapture. I would become a missionary of flavor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bend your ear if I could just for a moment. Now, when I walked in that door about a half hour ago, nobody paid me much mind. And I'll tell you why. Because you had no way of knowing that the well-dressed man sitting right here at this lunch counter where you break bread was the same man who opened the door every time temptation knocked. You had no way of knowing that this well-dressed man picked up the phone every time desire called. I was a sinner sinner. I was a glutton's glutton. I was a luster's lusterer. And that don't matter right now. 
because everything has changed. And how has it changed? From one plate of food I had right here. And I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. Rose, can you come up here, please? Rose, please. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to a beautiful lady. This is beautiful Rose. When Rose makes a plate of food, she uses an ingredient you can't find on the spice rack. She uses an ingredient you don't find in your grocer's freezer. She uses an ingredient and it's right. That's called love. And that's what soul food is all about. She didn't look at a customer coming in and say, oh look, that's a friend of mine. That's a member of my community I know my whole life. I want to make them a special plate of food. No, she looked at Baron Ambrosia, a perfect stranger, and she did the same thing. Because when it says soul food above the door, it means there is food made to heal the soul. Quiet down, people try to eat. Demon's gone. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you are seeing a miracle happen right now. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. amen. Hallelujah, amen. amen. I'm from North Carolina. I cook some good food. Jamila's my best waitress, and my only waitress. And um, we serve everything. Pig feet, ham hock, fried chicken, barbecue chicken, barbecue ribs, turkey wing, collard greens, macaroni and cheese, candy yams. Black eyed peas, peas and rice, peach cobbler, banana pudding, um, sweet potato fat. We serve everything. The secret to good soul food is you got to want to do it. You have to want to do it. You got to love to do it because it's not an easy job. And it's something that has to really be in you. My soul food pilgrimage continued to Filet of Soul on Westchester Avenue where Cynthia and the team start off every morning cooking only with the freshest ingredients, along with all the classic sides and a mysterious house elixir known only as Triple Blend, Filet of Soul specializes in crispy fried fish and homemade hush puppies. But the question remained, did they truly understand the soul food philosophy? The secret to good soul food is a lot of love. Cooking with love. Cooking with love, that's the secret to it. Cook it with love. When it's made with love, it, it becomes addictive. And us is no cursing in here. Absolutely. Our food is blessed. And we don't want anyone to come in and curse it. Oh, and blessed it was. For sanctified felt I when enshrouded in the gentle cloak of Cynthia's holy hush puppies. I continued with my newfound energy to speak the word of my noble discoveries to all who'd listen. But if I expect this information ever get back to Chantel, I'd have to find a larger soapbox. What you need to do is you need to send me in some of your homemade foods so I can eat it. And I can tell you how good it is and I can feel it inside of me. If you want this message to continue on the air, you need to call the number at the bottom of your screen right now. Because I need to send in your food, your homemade food, your baked goods. <laughs> Make my own time, right? If you want me to tell you how it is, I gotta know how it tastes. Hello, caller. I see you've been doing a lot of good for the people, Reverend Barry. Yes. Well, thank you very much, miss. Never mind who I am. I just want to pledge one peach cobbler. Mm, mm, mm. Now, would you, uh, would you like to have that sent in? Or would you like Reverend Barron to come and pick that up? I made it. The least you can come and do is pick it up. You better hurry up before it gets cold. Well, uh, that's actually all the time we have for today, unfortunately. But remember, miracle can't happen, and it will happen to you. Go to your closest culinary pew. This is Ben Ambrosia, helping to break the Bronx flavor in you. I gotta go. <laughs>